Okay, so as I said before, we took a break. I hope you all had a, a nice, enjoyable break. As I said before, we took the break. I'm hoping to hear from you. Um, at least one person. Um, a, a bit of a reflection of what we've been doing for the last two hours, and what you know, what stood out, what was unclear. Um, I would prefer to, to hear that from a voice rather than reading it because I might misinterpret or misread. So, any volunteers? Hello. Who's that? Wani? Hello. Hi. Yes. You're hearing me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, just making sure. Yes, my neighbor just pulled out, so I just plug in my mic. Very nice. Who is who? Tell me your name. This is Nadine. This is Nikita. Hi, Nikita. Sorry, Nikita. Just give me just tell me tell me a brand real quick. Um, my brand, I'm rebranding right now, so I'm still okay. working out exactly what that will be, especially now that um, COVID hit, I'm rebranding again. When I thought I knew what I was doing, now I'm doing it over. But um, I really just, uh, I wanted to give my feedback on the Twitter because I realized nobody really talked about it much. Yeah. I mean, other than, other than what you said, they didn't really seem to, you know, have much to say about it. I don't know if you all would be on Twitter. But um, the main difference with, between Twitter and I think all of the social media channels that you, um, you were speaking about is that Twitter is really raw information and that's different from content. Content is really where you're putting something together to say, okay, I'm targeting a certain audience and I'm putting it out there to reach a certain you know, target market. But Twitter is just, it's information coming at you very fast paced. It's really a, a news based platform. Um, like for instance, I went to, on it an hour ago and you know, I got a, first thing I saw was a post from Kijan Hain saying that how the conference was canceled today. So what I would find is that on Twitter, you will get news before it even comes out as news, before the wider public even knows it. And how I really think that this helps your business is that you're able to see, to actually gauge how the market is thinking and you know what they would want. Whereas you with Facebook and Instagram, it's just you know pre-made content that is hitting you. And it's either you like it or you don't like it, right? So I, I mean, even going back with Twitter, the first time I was on it was for, if you all remember Anya's um, runway, campaign that she did, I actually joined it specifically to vote her, vote her whole campaign yeah. on it there. And then there was the like number sign I-40 and campaign that they had for 2012 yeah. for the London Olympics. And that's when I really started yeah. to get into it. So I really think what you said is right about being, it's, it's a very good place to launch a campaign because the people there, they really look at it as information and they gravitate towards it in that way. So, you know, that's really a good place to like really follow business of fashion, follow industry leaders, you know, follow people, reporters from like from different parts of the world. So you can find out what is going on for things that will impact your business. It's not really, it is for content. Yes, but it's more for in information. In addition to finding out information, mm -hmm. you can become part of the conversations that are trending. You can mm -hmm. find yourself in the trending condition of the Kijan Haynes and the, the Laura Doriches and the Hema Ramsey Soons who write about things. Um, is ditch fashion here? Which is here, no? I see somebody with a D trying to say something. Is that ditch fashion? <laughs> So I just I, I just typed in on Twitter hashtag fashion hashtag Trinidad and Tobago just to see who is having that conversation about fashion and Trinidad and Tobago and ditch fashion. So the first thing I see is the Caribbean School of Languages. They're talking about um, fashion Trinidad and Tobago. I think they're probably just spamming the fashion thing. But then RBL, who is targeting multiple industries with the same 
get going with e-commerce webinar I told you guys about. They've hashtag both fashion and Trinidad and Tobago. Ditch Fashion is actually selling on Twitter. Sizes remaining, small, medium, large, price $285. T-shirt available now at Ditch Fashion. Um, hashtag fashion, hashtag Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Ariana Tama is showing a, 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 an outfit worn by um, Calypso Rose. Um, um, in essence, the, the fashion community is beginning to, to to bubble on on Twitter. So I want to I want to put a call to the fashion designers in the room, the fashion practitioners in the room. Let's take over Twitter. Let's go on Twitter and let's start putting our content there. Let's let the the communities know that we're here. Let's engage the media on Twitter and start joining conversations. Start letting people know what is happening. And the creativity is not strategy. So the strategy is I'm going to be on Twitter. Creativity comes next. How you use Twitter, how you represent yourself on Twitter, that's that 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 largely has to do with your creativity. Um Michelle Charles says I love that idea. Let's jump on Twitter, guys. Follow me at Chris Granji. <laughs> um can can I get another another reflection? Because that Nikita gave a a, a a a postponed comment, but what I'm hoping for is a, a reflection of what stood out and what mattered and how what we've discussed so far can be applied to your business. Do I need to? What? Hi. Yeah. Princess Temple of Royalism Designs. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I I just have like a different side of it, right? So I just was I was wondering if anyone else here feels like this. I mean, I would like to have a vibrant social media presence and and everything, but does anyone else find that? managing these platforms a bit overwhelming sometimes like you know when sometimes i think about oh how to create a content to post and you have to think about layout and all these things so i was just wondering if it's just me and then what advice you have because i want to get out of my head and you know get into the social media thing but it's i sometimes do it an overwhelming thing you know yeah it is definitely not just you somebody was going to say something it's okay are you talking about i think, what are they talking about this is literally rising well i feel a little better um think knowing that i'm not alone so but i have work to do on it you know yeah, so what I would do to help you, I think what is going to make the biggest difference in your life is content calendar development. When you are able to sit for one afternoon and plan your content for a month and then schedule it, you will realize that you stressed out for one day, but for the rest of the month, you're making money. Or at least you're making money into that. Dale, I want to ask you to take off your mic because we're hearing all of your background noise and I don't think you're contributing in that way. Okay, great. Thank you. Right, so it, that we will talk about the content calendar and that is going to make the big difference in your life. Planning is the difference between feeling overwhelmed and feeling prepared. So let's continue. <laughs> so we talked about all of these platforms, right guys? But we didn't talk about TikTok. What about TikTok? Anybody here on TikTok? Yes. How are you using it? And and is it important? Let me just get your general feeling of, of TikTok, what it is, and, and is it important to your brand? Um to be honest, I really just joined to see what it is about. 
Um, my husband, he has an account and he is getting a lot of traction on it from younger viewers. Um, and I think um, I was wondering how I can use it for fashion, um, but I'm still mulling it over in my head. So I'm not an active user, but I'm more just, you know, looking, looking at it for now. Okay, I'm gonna give you a loose statistic right after I remind you that creativity and strategy aren't the same. So how you represent your brand on the platform isn't necessarily the fact that you should be there. So here's the strategic insight. It took Instagram to, it took Instagram to 11 years, I think, to get to 1.8 billion active users. It took Twitter half that time to get to just under a billion. So the fact is that TikTok, did I say Twitter or TikTok? TikTok. The fact is that TikTok is the fastest growing social media platform ever. And when you see the, the fact, the, when there's actually more users on TikTok than on than than there's content to fill it up. So there's they're pushing content to everyone. And so your content moves faster on TikTok. So if you can find a way to build content that is both engaging and true to your brand, it's going to grow faster on TikTok than anywhere else. And that's why I felt it was important to bring TikTok into the conversation. I have a short video for you guys. Um, with this guy just spitting some facts about TikTok and its reach. And I just wanted to, to, to make sure you have a sense of what is going on in the TikTok space. So sit tight and watch this video. It's just a couple of minutes long. What's up, bud? It's Rob. This is Apparel Success. And in the past month or so, I built my clothing brand's TikTok. I want to pause to make sure you're here in the video and seeing it. So see this as a sort of testimonial for the use of TikTok. What's up, bud? It's Rob. This is Apparel Success. And in the past month or so, I've built my clothing brand's TikTok account to over 18,000 followers and generated dozens of orders. And I know that there are a lot of TikTok skeptics out there, so I'm not going to try and convince you to use TikTok in this video. Instead, I'm going to show you what I've done, and I think by the end of it, you're going to want to hop on. This video is sponsored by my buds over at Brand Crowd, and if you need designs made for your clothing brand, then I seriously recommend that you check them out. They have a huge library of already professionally designed logos that you can customize. You can add your own fonts to them, your own layout to them. All this is free to try. Then if you decide you actually like the logo, then you can decide to purchase it, remove it from the marketplace so that it's yours. If you're interested, follow the link in the description because it'll give you a huge discount. So yeah, my clothing brand, K-Bud Apparel, has 24.8 thousand followers on Instagram, which is pretty cool, right? Not really. These days, whenever we make a post, we're only reaching about four or 5,000 people. And at best, we'll reach maybe 10 or 11,000 people. But back in the day, we'd reach all of them. We'd reach all 24,000 people. And the reason why this isn't happening anymore is because Instagram's algorithm has tightened up and they want you to spend money now to reach people. Instagram is still a place where we're gonna continuously engage with people and continuously make these posts to reach the audience that we can reach. But at the same time, as an entrepreneur, what you need to be doing is looking for new opportunities and constantly growing. You can't expect things to stay the same forever. So hearing everybody TikToking about TikTok all the time, we decided to hop on and try it out for our own clothing brand. This is what happened. Three months ago, we made our first post. And these first couple posts that we made were essentially montages of pictures that we used on Instagram to music. And these posts really didn't do that good. What we did is we just kept trying out different things. And since my clothing brand represents rural Canada, we decided to come out with funny videos about rural Canada because K-Bud Apparel is kind of this funny, humorous, rural Canadian brand. So it was like, this content would be perfect for our brand. It's also offering entertainment value, that comedy value, and maybe it'll sink that way. And so what we did is we put out some cool videos in rural Canada, some funny videos in rural Canada, and the next two videos that we made actually took off. One of them got 53,000 views 
on TikTok almost immediately. The other one got 29,000 views. Now, when you're trying out something new and you get a few wins, it's very easy to keep going. They call this the winner effect. It got us super excited and it made us want to hop back on and keep posting more content to keep the thing going. And if you just made a few posts, say you made 10 posts and none of them did well, you might get discouraged and never want to keep going with this. But because we got a few wins, we were optimistic and we wanted to keep going. And what happened was truly incredible for a clothing brand. As we kept coming out with this content, we started to notice that views just kept piling up more and more as we figured out the types of hashtags that were really getting a lot of views for our brand and that we were really ranking high in on TikTok. So literally you can see the next post that we made got 142.3 thousand views. Another one got 3.3 million views. It completely took off and went legitimately viral. 3.3 million views and 147.7 thousand likes. Another one got 804,000 views, 23,000 views, 92,000 views, 26,000 views, and a ton more that did in the same amount. And so literally, if you think about it, all of this is completely free. This is awareness for your clothing brand that you're not spending a single cent on to make. Completely free, top of the funnel marketing that you don't need to spend any money on to market your clothing brand right there on TikTok for you. If you're willing to reach out, be open-minded enough and test it out until you can get this working for your own clothing brand. Now, the myth of whether TikTok actually leads to sales for your clothing brand or whether you're just building up an audience, 100% TikTok has led to tons of sales for my clothing brand. And I have direct evidence of that. There's literally people who write in the comments, where can I buy these t-shirts? Where can I buy these hoodies? Where can I buy this clothing? This stuff looks awesome. Where can I get it? We link them to our website and immediately we're getting sales directly on our website from people finding us on TikTok. So no longer do you need to speculate as to whether TikTok can be used for business. 100% it can and 100% it's effective at generating orders and building up a huge audience for new people to sell to. Now the best part about this is that it's really not that hard. You literally just have to do a little bit of hashtag research, figure out the hashtags that are aligned with your clothing brand, make content that's either funny or entertaining, or offer some sort of value that's aligned with your clothing brand, use the right hashtags and it will get discovered. TikTok is growing at a very, very rapid rate right now. And what this means is that as new people hop onto the platform, there's not enough content to go around to all these people. And TikTok needs to be showing these people something to keep them engaged on the platform. And so basically, if you make content that is at all valuable to people watching, it's at all entertaining, then TikTok has a strong incentive to rank this content high and show it to a lot of people because there's generally a scarcity of content on the platform compared to the amount of people that are hopping on it. And this gives you an amazing opportunity right now to hop on and really get your clothing brand, your content discovered very, very easily. On January 1st, I posted a video called How to Market Your Clothing Brand in 2020. And if you haven't checked it out already, go check it out. It'll definitely help you when it comes to how to market your clothing brand. But in that video, it's crazy to think I was talking about building up an audience to sell to and how we're going to be focusing on becoming influencers ourselves as a clothing brand. And this is before all of this has happened on TikTok. And even in that video, I mentioned how we're going to be starting up a YouTube channel or how we're going to be trying to do a TikTok account. And it's amazing to see how much it's already progressed in literally a month and a half. And so this is what I really recommend that you do is you try and really work TikTok while there's this huge opportunity on it. And be more open-minded than people who are just like, ah, it's never going to work, and it's never going to get results, whatever. You know, I'll just stick to what everybody else is doing. Because in order to get really good results in business, you really have to think differently and act differently and take behaviors that are different than what other people are doing. Okay, So if you can get ahead of this right now and really hop on and do some damage, I think that it will really pay off for you. Check out my Colden Brand Marketing Masterclass. It's 100% free to watch. All you have to do to get access is go to apparelsuccess.com slash. So, so that's TikTok. And Christy, I love that you made reference to the sales funnel because that's just where we're going into next. The funnel is going to be the core of our strategy. So all of these things, when people ask this question about, well, I'm doing all of this singing and dancing for likes. What am I getting all these likes for? And this likes is going to, is this going to turn into sales? That's really what the funnel is going to, to guide you to. Um, and we'll talk about that in the upcoming slide. Dale is saying, my question is though, 
how does it work for brands whose target audience isn't necessarily silly videos? Right, so I am definitely not saying that because silly videos work well on, Twitter, on TikTok, that that is the only type of content that will work well. And because quite a lot of young people are on TikTok, that that's the only people who are on TikTok. As a matter of fact, I'm 33 years old and I'm on TikTok. And the there are many, 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 many of my my people my age and brands and celebrities and a lot of people who are consumers and creators of content on TikTok. So the mere fact that that it's something has been done in a particular way before is not necessarily your creative approach. So remember I'm saying strategy and creative aren't the same thing. So just because the strategy is to employ TikTok as part of your funnel it does not mean that you have to do silly videos. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But you do have to create compelling content that works. How do you know if the content works? You have to test it. You have to test content. We talked about that, about testing content on Instagram, testing content on Facebook, and now testing content on TikTok. It's no different because <clears throat> you have a unique brand and you have a unique set of followers. And so you just have to put content out there and see what resonates. And I'm not saying, I'm, I'm never saying put content outside of your value system or your brand's belief system or your brand's identity. You have to create content and content ideas. And when you're thinking about ideas, I love to say it's easier to come up with 10 ideas than it is to come up with one. So anytime you're thinking about how do I approach content for TikTok or how do I approach content for Instagram stories, come up with 10 ideas. Write down 10 ideas. It's easier to come up with 10 than one. So up on the screen now, what we have is the, the, the statistics as at the beginning of, Jan of 2019 from Hootsuite. Hootsuite is pretty much an authority in, in the digital marketing space um, on the audiences in Trinidad and Tobago. And this is really valuable content because it helps you to get a sense of who is where. And so these are the top platforms in Trinidad and Tobago, 740 thousand monthly active users are on Facebook. So just when someone says nobody's on Facebook, this you can just point them to this this stat this um statistic. 740,000 monthly active users on Facebook, 52% being female and 48% being male. In most cases, whenever I do analytics reports online, you always find that females are more um active online than males. I don't know why you always see that. And then even now in the Facebook space, we find that there are more females on Facebook than males. Kabir is saying, what are your thoughts as to how people's use of social media will change in the near to mid future? People are spending a lot more time on, but there are also these who are spending less time because of the amount of negativity, stress around things, COVID related, I spend much less time than I used to. I think in general, Kavir, the use of the usage of social media platforms is going to multiply by 10. I didn't say double, I said multiply by 10. And I'm saying that because I'm in that space right now and I'm observing some of my clients' data and how the user's data has changed over time. People are on social media platforms for longer periods of time. Whereas someone might have spent 10 minutes in the morning, another 10 minutes when they get to work, 15 minutes during the day, now someone would sit down and watch an Instagram live for an hour in the middle of the week. And that is how things have changed. So you have a more engaged user, um, user group now because of the pandemic. And you also have people who are going to more niche platforms. So you, you're getting a lot more people. TikTok, TikTok is booming because of this reason, because people are looking for new content and looking for new places. You would see Pinterest grow. So I'm sure that even these numbers, which is why I put the date here, these statistics, 2019, I'm sure that these statistics have grown somewhat um, in terms of active users. Um, Kavir is saying, but do we want to encourage people living like that? I think the role of a marketer is not to encourage consumer behavior, but to observe it and work with it. You know, we want to encourage people to move in our direction when they're already in a particular space. 
Um, Dale is saying, my next question for a small brand who may not have access to having a social media manager right now, I assume that's what SMM means. Um, how do you keep up with all these platforms? Because aside from curating each profile, you also have constant tuning of content, especially small businesses where the entrepreneur may be wearing multiple hats. Right. So don't go on all the platforms. Let me just say that to you. I mean, I could say to you all the platforms aren't for everybody, but you have to understand that as a, as a business owner, as an executive, as an entrepreneur, you have to, re, you have to allocate your resources in a, in a smart way. So you have to determine which one or two platforms as a small to medium enterprise, which one or two platforms are manageable by you. By no means am I sitting here encouraging you to be on all the platforms. I went through the details of all the platforms so that everyone has an understanding of the different uses of the different platforms so that you can determine which platform works best for your organization. But by no means should you be on all platforms and stretching your resources so thinly that you're performing poorly on all platforms. You with me? So Instagram has 400,000 monthly active users. So while we think that Instagram is trendy and Instagram is hip, it might just be because most of the active users on Instagram are closer to your age than, than Facebook or maybe TikTok. So Instagram is big, yes, and it's bigger than Twitter and it's bigger than, than LinkedIn, but it is still dwarfed by Facebook at 400,000 monthly active users. Twitter, you know what is really interesting about this 100,000 active users on Twitter? They're mostly guys. That's different, isn't it? It's 66% male. It's mostly male active followers. And that's funny because if you go through the types of content, only when I realized this statistic was true, I was like, yes, that is so true. The, the way people communicate on, on, on Twitter is not as finesse filled as let's say Pinterest or even Instagram. There's, it's a lot more crass. It's, they're saying it's less story content as the lady spoke before, it's raw, it's a lot more raw. Men are the headlines, when are the articles? I, I guess that's a perspective. And so it's nice to know who is, who is there and be able to jump into conversations with them. Um, have you all noticed um, some of the, the types of conversations? I'll tell you some of the, the brands I, I, I think did well on Twitter in the past few months. I may or may not have worked with them. Arab the CPL did a, a really nice conversation on Twitter and it was, it, it performed well because they were having a conversation about sports. Domino's Pizza also is having a conversation about sports and, and trending topics and, and being very um, almost irreverent in their, in their conversation because that sort of witty, crass approach to Twitter works well. I'm not saying that it works for every brand or it should be used by every brand, but it works well. And I think it works well on Twitter because the guys are there. Um, so that's, that's a really nice statistic to, to pay attention to. Um, and, you know, Twitter is still evolving in Trinidad and there's still a lot for us as a whole industry. As, as, as I said, I, I want this fashion industry to jump on Twitter and let's skew these statistics. Let's take control of it. Let's own it. Um, there are 350,000 registered members on LinkedIn. I don't have the statistics for TikTokers yet, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're huge in, in Trinidad. And as soon as I get it, I'm going to post it so y'all can get it. So I have the accurate information about TikTok. So LinkedIn is, is also very important. So these are the big platforms. And these are generally the platforms that we talk about in industry. When I am making recommendations for organizations to spend budgets on platforms, these are the platforms that I consider because there is a community behind it. So when I'm making a recommendation in a classroom setting to really hone in on which platforms would make sense for you, I suggest you think about one of these four and keep your eye on TikTok because as you know, TikTok is like a hack. It's going to give you exponential growth very, very quickly. Why do fashion brands use social media? Of course, they gain awareness. We love awareness. And a lot of people think that marketing is awareness, but it's not. It's, it's not just awareness. Marketing is relationship building. It's building a community as well and building 
a, a, a sense of values within that community. So I like to say your social community is like a neighborhood and the administrator in that social community is like the neighborhood, um, the, the neighborhood coordinator who coordinates all the activities. You ever been in a WhatsApp group and there's somebody who would say, okay guys, so we're not gonna say good morning to everybody in this WhatsApp group. We're not gonna say, um, we're not going to say happy birthday to everybody. We're not going to post small talk. This WhatsApp group is for neighborhood watch, is for fashion updates, is for job, job articles, whatever is, is the group, it's for something. Similarly, in a brand community on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn, you would want to set a certain value system for your, for your community and say, this community is for this. We, we help each other by doing this. And when you start to, to treat your community online like an actual community, you realize that you, you're, you're building relationships at scale and you're building rules and, and ways people operate and you're building a language system. So you're building a, a certain set of politeness and as Enjoy Life Caribbean is saying, it sets a tone. You're creating a community that you are in, you are governor for, you are governing. And so social media is a space that helps people to understand the tone and the value system and the identity of your brand's community. The social media for fashion brands, it also provides knowledge. A lot of our fashion brands are sustainable fashion brands in Trinidad. I love that. I love, one of the things I love about many of our fashion brands is, is how much of a heart we have in our industry. And the fact that we have knowledge to share, we have the ability to say, listen, I stand for this and this is important to talk about. Um, Wani and the Black Madonna, for example. Um, the Black Madonna, Wani, I really, I like your brand so much, but I don't like to talk about it on your behalf. Um, so just, you know, interrupt me for, if I think. The, the Black Madonna, from what I saw, is a, a, a piece of artwork that showcased a collection of articles in Trinidad and Tobago that featured um, the, 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 the fight that we're having with, with sexual trauma and sexual abuse in Trinidad. And so, what she is doing with that is actually providing knowledge. Wania actually told me that Tobago um, is, is, is one of the highest statistics per capita for sexual abuse in the world. And that's knowledge that, you know, I need to know that's valuable for me to understand where she's coming from and why I need to support her brand. And, and that sort of knowledge is, is really valuable. So we have, we, social media gives us an opportunity to provide knowledge. Um, it also gives us the space to engage our community, to get feedback and listen. Feedback, guys. And number five speaks about listening. And it's, it's generally that same thing. Let's engage and let's listen. Yeah, I didn't know about Tobago either until Wanya told me. Um, yeah, so it, it allows us to listen. I'll tell you, I, I had a client, I have a client and we we recently we recently did an audit and revamped the entire digital and social media experience and let me tell you what i did i sat and read every single message and this is a, a, a major a regional client I, re I read every single message inside of their inbox and started to to take note of the types of questions that were being asked and the types of concerns that were coming to the inbox. And I started to categorize those questions and concerns. And when I was able to categorize it, I found myself with seven general categories of questions and concerns that people come to this page for. And now that I got that seven categories of questions and concerns, I was able to now create a whole content calendar for the month just answering all of those questions in general. So we listened to them and now we're responding. And then I was able to take that, those questions and concerns and give it to the innovation team to say, guys, let's create some products that, that, that really alleviate the, the, the concerns of these people and really answer these questions. Because when you really listen, and when I say listen, I don't mean just respond to an inbox question now and oh, when you're ordering or do you have read? Or, you know, it's not just about responding, it's about understanding and appreciating what they're coming to you for and then responding to that in a major structured manner. 
um, which invariably, inevitably is going to build brand loyalty. You also build brand recognition through social media. Um, I worked with Caribbean Airlines about 10 years ago. Um, I had them as a client. And I remember it was something I learned from them. We did an ad and she said to me, I want to see Caribbean Airlines, either the bird, the colors, the, um, the logo. I want to see it in every single frame. I want to see it from the beginning. I want the entire experience to, to feel like you are in a Caribbean Airlines branded experience. And I tell you, eh, Caribbean Airlines is doing a good job with branding. And I have taken that lesson into my social media content by basically saying, how is my brand, how, how is my brand and the brand of my clients going to be represented everywhere? And when I say brand, I don't mean colors only. I don't mean font only. I don't mean logo only. I mean aesthetic. I mean vibe. I mean mission. How do you represent your brand in such a way that somebody can look at something else and, and recognize you in it? So, for example, I could look at a campaign for healing from sexual abuse and I could think about Wanya because I recognize the conversation. I recognize the, the, the brand. I can look at how, how do I take that further? Is there a set, are there a set of colors that I can use consistently? Is there a font? Is there something visually that I can use consistently all the time so that people begin to recognize my brand? Um, and then, of course, to manage an organization's reputation to build a legacy. Now, brand management on the whole is about, man is about controlling and directing the narrative. Because as long as you are in the public eye, people are going to have things to say. People are going to have an opinion. People are going to want to transfer a message. So you need to create the words, the, the narrative. What is your brand? What is it about specifically? You see, Kiran, a, a short while ago, I, um, I didn't understand your context, but then Wanya explained the narrative for me. That narrative needs to always be something that a consumer can pull from and, and speak to about your brand. And it's, it's, it's something that we need to write, we need to articulate our narrative and put it on social media so that people, if they Google you, they search on social media, they actually have the words to describe your brand. You cannot expect a consumer to be able to describe or define your brand if you don't give them the words. So that's why we use social media. Any questions about that? Sorry, Kavir, not, Kir not Kiran. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My apologies. Okay. So this but, is the sorry, template that sorry, we're going to use for social media. Sorry, Chris. Sure. Uh, just a, a quick question. Um, so when you when you create this um the words right and is it that you're putting it across to all of your social media platforms is that what you want to do yes i i would like for your narrative to be written in the about section of your social media platforms i would like the narrative to be written at the uh, uh, as part of your blog posts i mean i, I would like you to write you need to be able to, I would like you to, to create, to write words so that there are, there are particular words that your consumers will begin to adopt and to use when they're describing your brand always. And those words you gave to them. A lot of That's times smart. when I go, when I go into an organization, I begin the process of setting up a Wikipedia page. It's not an easy process, but a Wikipedia page is a really valuable tool to describe the narrative. When you put, when you create blog posts, when someone, if you have a lot of written content about your, about your brand that really speaks to that narrative, when someone Googles your brand, the narrative that comes up is the narrative you've given them. So you have to find opportunities to put your narrative into text. So you have those opportunities in blog posts. You have those opportunities in Wikipedia. Should you be able to, to configure that? Because it, it's a bit of a process that I'm not getting into here. Um, and you have the opportunity to, to put that on your website and to, to put it in your about and in your, your, your bio and all these different things. But the words that you use to describe your brand are the words that other people will use. So you have to articulate those words with strength and conviction. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Hi, this is Christian. You mean by the narrative, you mean your brand story? 
and like particular hashtags that you would use across all these social media platforms? Your brand story for certain should be articulated. You absolutely should be clear on your brand story. Um, so I, I guess, yes, but I, I feel like the word, the, the, the idea of a brand story is a little limiting to one, one story. A narrative as opposed to a story speaks a little bit about, it's, it's more ongoing. It's more every time you do something, how would, how, how would it be described? So let, let's use Wanya's example. Again, Wanya just did an event last week. I can say Wanya do some events online um, or some fashion designer do an event online and um, it had something to do with, with healing. And so leaving out a core part of it, we would have moved on thinking that the Wanya brand is, is particularly about healing. But had Wanya done a release, a press release or a blog release um, or an email blast release that described the why, the what and the how of this event, then the person who has knowledge about the brand has accurate knowledge. So it goes a bit more into detail than the brand story because the brand story defines why we're doing it. Yes, and that's really important. Um, and I'll give you all some tools to define in your brand story a bit later on in the session. But when I'm speaking about the narrative, I'm kind of speaking about an ongoing communication about your brand. Make sense? Yes. Yes, but then you should be updating that regularly, like every three months or. Yes, you know? I do. Think, I do think that every, as part of your con your monthly content calendars, you should always try to include one written piece, so that you you give words to the activities that are happening with the brand, and that does wonders for your SEO as well. It does wonders for that because it helps. It helps connect the dots for Google. It helps Google and other search engines to appreciate the type of conversation that you are having as a brand consistently. Consistency is very, very important in digital marketing. You can't put out one piece of content and call yourself talking about this content. If you are, if you are trying to be an authority or a thought leader in a particular brand communication space, you have to be putting out consistent content about that space for Google to see you as, as, as a, a valuable content contributor to put you in front of its consumers. So yes, I do believe that every month as you plan your content and you see right at the bottom center of this, right at the bottom of this page, bottom left, you have content calendar creation. So getting into the content calendars. As part of your content calendars, you have to put in some degree of long form written content so that you can control your narrative. Because I, I need to, the, the brands need to know, we need to be able to find it. And not just an email, it needs to be public content. You so Which is why, a LinkedIn blog or a WordPress blog, um, these or, or a blogger blog, any any platform you want to use that is Google searchable, these things are really valuable. Right. So what we what I have done for you here is put together a very simple four part social media strategy that all of us can use to to articulate our strategy. Because in some cases, and here's why it's important to articulate your strategy. And let me just define the word articulate. Write it down. It's really important for you to have a written version of your content and, and, and your social media strategy. Because you're right. You're an entrepreneur. You're not always going to be the one to execute the content. You're not always going to be the one to, to execute all aspects of the content. You might be, at first, but as your as you as your as your community grows and it will grow because we're doing strategic marketing here and like I tell my clients once we're doing this we're gonna win you know we're not going to we don't enter into strategic marketing to lose so once you articulate it you will grow I guarantee you and as you grow you're gonna have to pass on part of the strategy to a photographer to a writer to a social media manager you're gonna have to have other people read what's inside your head and as entrepreneurs we have to articulate what exactly it is, is it we want to do and we want to achieve and how do we go how are we going to achieve it over the next month 
three months, year, three years, 10 years. And so this four part strategy is simple and it's easy for you to be able to, to, to really make an impact. Um, it starts with setting objectives, number one. And by setting objectives, I'll show you specifically how we set objectives in the social media space. And then it gets into understanding your customer. We have to understand our customer because we want a relationship with our customer. Yes, we have to understand ourselves and that is a, a brand strategy. And that, that is an, a, a, we will talk about brand strategy, but that is a whole other thing. I want you, if you're, if you, if you're having some trouble um, defining your brand, I want you to just write down the brand pyramid. Write that down and Google it when we're finished with this class. And after we're finished and you've Googled it, if you want to talk about the brand pyramid, reach out to me on social media and I will help you to define your brand more clearly so that you can articulate it a bit better. But for now, we're going to be speaking more about, we're speaking from the perspective of having understood your brand, you know your brand, and we're really just trying to engender relationships with our consumers so that we can get our brand into the minds and hearts of our consumers, into the spirit of our consumers. And third is defining our value proposition. A lot of us think we sell clothes. Nah, we're not selling clothes. We sell a lifestyle. We sell the way people feel. We sell the way, the way people represent themselves. I love to make this joke in my classroom. You can always tell a, a woman with a Michael Kors bag because the Michael Kors bag is on the desk, on display. You can always tell someone with an Apple iPhone because it's on display, because they're proud of it and they're gonna work it into the conversation somehow. Because brands are symbols for people. And when we appreciate and understand what those symbols, what, what symbol we, we are creating for those people, then we really understand our value proposition. Which is why I, 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 I literally, I'm telling you, I called Wani yesterday and I told her she's sitting on a gold mine with the brand that she's creating because the value, the value proposition that I will get from wearing a Wanya outfit speaks to activism, it speaks to consciousness, it speaks to healing, it speaks to self-development. And then it speaks to putting on a, 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 an outfit. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about defining our value proposition. But our value proposition doesn't come from us, it comes from how we make the consumer feel. And that's something that's really important in social media because how you make someone feel dictates whether or not they're going to share your content. And the fourth prong is planning. Planning is something we have to do every month. It's something, and I, I love when I'm in a, if I work with a, a brand or a creative team, we have planning sessions. I have a client that I meet every Friday morning and we plan the following week of content based on a monthly plan, based on a yearly plan. And so we plan monthly and then we plan yearly and we come together and, we, and the planning is open and the planning is creative, but it's creative given a structure and I'm giving you the structure today. So in planning, we talk about content calendar creation. We talk about the actual creation of content because you can create a content calendar, but you might have to take that content calendar and then meet with a graphic designer to help get that content into a, a, a space where it can be used on social media. And then there's scheduling and publishing. There are tools for scheduling and publishing. I, I spoke earlier about Sprout Social and Hootsuite and Buffer, but now you don't even really need those tools because Facebook allows you to schedule tools in, in advance, allows you to schedule content in advance. And then there's promotion, where we talk about the boosting and, and other types of promotions like user-generated content and competitions and other things that don't necessarily cost you an arm and a leg. So this, this slide, from here on out, we begin the strategy conversation. And this slide is really very important. So if there's anything on this slide that you don't understand, now is the time. If you just want um, to air your thoughts or just give your opinion, now is the time as well. 
Um, you said something about promotion. I didn't get it. User content, something and something else. In, Wasn't sure what that was. In the promotion space, as we plan our promotions, so, uh, and by promotion, I mean we've created the content. We put the content on the, the social media page and we get four likes. What are we going to do? We have to promote it. How are we going to promote it? The options for promoting content, we will go through in detail. The options for promoting content on social media include the most basic one, which is boosting your content, giving Facebook your money and saying, put this content in front of X number of people. And that is a very good way of, of promotion. I don't get me wrong. It's a very good way of promotion if and only if in programming, we, in, in um, database design, we say IFF, if and only if. Um, the, 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 the promotion or the boosted post is done well. And by done well, I mean well targeted. And I will show you how to target things well in the next in a coming a couple of slides. So there's boosting for promotion, but then there's also, you can also run a contest um, for promotion. You can say, um, tag 10 of your friends um, to win a free hoodie, for example. That's a promotion. That's a way of getting things out. It didn't necessarily cost you money, it cost you a hoodie, but it's a promotion. Another promotion might be um, use this hashtag, which is user generated content, getting users to generate content on behalf of your brand. So, for example, Wanya, your live talks, you did a live talk with me, and I'm a user, I'm also a customer. Um, you did a live talk with me, and then I took that that talk and I shared it. That was content that I shared. That I'm a user, and I shared your content on your behalf. And someone who found value in it shared that as well. That's sharing of content. What if you shared those statistics that you talked talk, told me about for Tobago? That's some interesting content that might be shareable. And what if you tell somebody? You ask your your, your consumer base share your story. Tell me your story about healing, or tell me your story about love, or tell me your story about environmentalism. And they tell you, and they tell their friends their story that has to do with your brand. That's user-generated content. So we'll talk a little bit about more ways to get user-generated content to get your word outside of your network. That promotion. So we'll talk more about it as we go on. There's a slide on promotion specifically. Um, but as we plan, we want to make sure that we plan in a structured way, hence the content calendar creation. And I know that that is one of the biggest downfalls. So I'm asking you guys, please, if you, if you pick up anything at all in this entire session, it's building a content calendar and building it right. If there's anything you need to know, it's that. So we'll get into that. And then there's content creation. A lot of us can create our own content using Canva, using photo shoots, using a lot of different things we can do. And some of us like to, to outsource content creation. Some of us are not very good graphic designers. Some of us are not very good writers. Yes, hi. So, um, hello. Hi. I just have um, one of my problems I have realized from my, um, I'm Sabrina, sorry. Um, my business is JFAB Body. Basically what I do is Carnival Monday wear, um, or Monday wear that is, or that could be translated into a party wear later down, you know, from Trinidad Carnival all the way to Miami Carnival. What I have found in the promotion part of, of especially with um, Instagram, they have now blocked me from um, doing any sort of promotion or boosting my posts actually paying for it because they said that my content is uh, you know too much skin is a bit of nudity <laughs> that yeah. is so yeah. it's like okay yes the information is there yes i want to boost maybe you know doing letting just people know that this collection is coming out so i want to boost or this collection is available however because of that uh, inability to go forward with paying to get more people to see um, that is a bit of hindrance uh, that I have experienced for 2020, 2020 collection. I understand. Everything is an iterative process. 
are you able to to be to go back to the way your content is created and create it in a way that is more suited to instagram standards actually so, it's no example, different it was no different from the year before and the year before that um but no, it i beg your pardon instagram they change all the time they change their rules they change their algorithms many times a year right so we yeah we're gonna run into those types and of even, things even even like nothing that has that that it might just be like for instance my um my collection this year was royalty and even with my graphics trying to boost my graphic i'm still not able to do that okay so, so you know i don't know i don't know how i'm going to get around that right, if so you I was gonna say, there are ways around you can promote without boosting but i want to say this sabrina you want instagram on your side you you want to have content that they are supporting because from the time instagram flags your content it's always going to perform poorly so you you're going to want to revisit what how the content is represented because i could we could talk tips and tricks i mean facebook and instagram are, are owned by the same organization so you're not going to perform well on facebook if you're not performing well on facebook um we could talk about twitter we could talk about LinkedIn and we can talk about blogs and, and a lot of different ways and we can talk about contests and email and different ways to get this particular type of content out. But if you want to really get the best out of Instagram, you really have to get them on your side. So we're going to have to tweak the content until it gets to a place where Instagram is supporting you. I think that's literally the only way, the, not the only way, it's not the only way, but that's, gonna, that's the best way because you don't want to not be supported by the algorithm. The algorithm is is it okay thank but you we will, I will give you some tactics i have a slide with some promotional tactics that you you should be able to use and i hope that that you you know we could talk more about it okay thanks let me just read these comments um comments coming in where we're gonna uh can you recommend a way to schedule posts on ig i know that if you switch to a business account one yes what tips or apps would you think could help? But definitely switch to a business account. I I always advocate for that. And you can use Buffer, Hootsuite, Loomly, or Sprout Social. All of them have free and paid versions for you to be able to plan and schedule and post content. Pinterest have no problem with that girl move your <laughs> move, move your ad right sabrina twitter hasn't blocked my stuff twitter um but i didn't get issues with facebook and instagram even with content that was without their standards i i did stand still all right so i'm going to move on from this page and we're going to get into objectives and performance management so what you're seeing on your screen here is the digital marketing funnel and i say the v with a capital t because in 1898 some guy named saint elmo lewis i think his name was um he discovered and dictated that in order for anybody to purchase something and this now marketing was born out of economics and economics the, the idea of supply and demand is an economic term people want it we have to demand it if we have it people will want it but it it, it wasn't enough the economists didn't understand why some people were buying some things and others weren't so elmo saint elmo lewis or whatever his name is he is old and gone he created the ida model some people say the ada model a i d a that is awareness or attention interest a i d desire and then action what that model dictates and it, it's it's a it's a fundamental model for all of marketing and communications what that model dictates is that in order for anyone to buy something from you, they have to first be aware of it. And after they're aware of it, it has to be, they have to become interested. 
after they're interested, they then have to desire it. And after they desire it, only then will they spend their money on it. So from that, we recognize that it's the marketer's job to create awareness, to create interest, to create desire, and to facilitate the sale, to facilitate the action. And we have been operating like that for 100 years. Facebook came in and recognized the same, the, the value of that model. And what they did, they optimized the model. They said, all right, cool. We agree with the awareness, but I think that we could create interest and desire in one thing. We call it consideration. We could get somebody to consider our product or we could get somebody to consider your product. And in considering it, they would, they would, they would be interested and, and they would build desire for it. And then we would help you to convert. So Facebook helps you to generate awareness and then they help you to generate consideration and then they help you to convert your customers. So as we set objectives for our content calendars, for our overall marketing program, we think about objectives from three perspectives. What are our objectives in getting people aware? And that is measured in reach and impressions. So how many people do we want to reach? How many impressions do we want to get? You're familiar with these statistics on your Facebook pages, reach and impressions. I get no responses from the 48 people here. Okay. Yes. yes <laughs> okay, good. That, that surprised me a little bit because these are terms that we, we, we should know at this point. So Facebook is, is basically at the beginning of every campaign that you set with Facebook, they ask you, what is your goal? Are you trying to get people aware? In which case we can put the ad in, we can put your content in the face of a certain number of people to get a certain number of impressions. And in many cases, you're seeing those impressions in tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. That really means now reach and impressions is how many people see your ad or how many people scroll past your ad, how many times the ad was delivered to someone's newsfeed. It does not mean that they interacted with your ad, but that is awareness. So now that they're aware, we can now get people to consider the ad. In considering the ad, we're talking about providing knowledge, exposing them to your brand culture, and getting them interested in general. And that is me measured in clicks. You, you show that you're considering something by clicking on it. You look at it and you click through to it. How many clicks are you trying to get in any given campaign? The only way for you to know whether your campaign was a success or a failure is if you decide upfront that you want to get 10,000 people aware and 1,000 people to click on it. If you didn't get 1,000 people to click on it, then you may want to figure out how to maybe adjust the creative. And please don't think that your creative is the best thing in the world. Creative does not always work. And sometimes we have to adjust creative and put out different types of creative for it to work. It's called A-B testing in creative. And then conversion. Do you want people to buy your product? Well, if you want people to convert, and that is measured in your sale or clicks through to the website, which would then give you another conversion opportunity. So you want to get 10,000 people, your objectives would look like you want to get 10,000 people aware. So I want this ad to reach 10,000 people so that 1,000 people will consider my product. So I expect in this campaign that 1,000 people will click on the ad or the promotion or the bit of content. And so that would facilitate 100 people to buy it. Because if I could show it to 10,000 and I get a hundred, I get a thousand people interested, I could probably get a hundred people to buy it. 
And that's really how your conversion funnel works. Now, the question is, how do you build content? How do you build tactics at each level to lubricate the movement between awareness, consideration, and conversion? Because I could see your content, but I don't mean I want to click it. I have to make it, it has to be enticing. I could click on your content and read it, but I, that don't mean I want to buy it. It has to be, your, your buying has to, it has to be applicable to me, for me to buy it. I'm going to tell you something about conversion in Trinidad. Eh? I might see a product, I might want to buy it, but then you do have a website that sells it on e-commerce and your phone number on your Instagram page, you don't answer it. Or I send you a DM on Instagram and you take a week to respond. In many cases, conversion has everything to do with simply showing up to facilitate the sale. Answer the phone, SMEs. That's one of the biggest issues I have with business in Trinidad. When you get somebody down and ready to convert, and usually that is dictated by your DMs. If somebody is in your DMs, then that means they are they they are aware of you, they've considered you, and they are a prime lead. Show up for them and help them to convert into a sale. So that at the end of this, we have a metrics-driven system that determines whether our campaign was a success or a failure and what level of the campaign was a success and what level was a failure. Maybe we, we did really well in awareness, but not so good in consideration. So we have to go back to our consideration. This is making sense to you guys? Good. Michelle, no, there isn't a timeline set for everybody. Every brand is different and every consumer group is different. You would have to set your own timelines. So that, that's a great question because it takes us to SMART objectives. And for those of us that have not yet been introduced to SMART objectives, SMART objectives are specific, S, measurable, M, attainable, A, R, realistic, and T, very importantly, time-bound. So anytime you're setting objectives for, for your, your campaigns, you want to make sure they're smart. You want to make sure they're specific. I specifically want to reach this group of people. You want to make sure they're measurable. I want to get 1,000 people to click on my campaign. You want to make sure they're attainable. So I want to get 1,000 people in this geographic region. You want to make sure they're realistic. You're not trying to get 1,000 people who don't know you in Abu Dhabi. And you want to make sure they're time bound and time bound in a realistic manner. So that's really very important. So you should, if you haven't yet been introduced to smart objectives, just keep it at the back of your mind when developing objectives. Is this objective a smart one? Is it specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, or time bound? So now we're getting into what I like to call effects driven objectives or objectives that create an effect. So it's the same thing we're talking about, just in more detail. Awareness objectives are objectives that generate interest in your product, and it's measured through brand awareness and through reach. And it is what, remember this guy in the TikTok video, he, he talked about top of the funnel content. Somebody say yes, and I really remember that. Nobody. Okay, Sabrina remembers. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, this is the top of the funnel. Whenever you hear somebody talking about top of the funnel, we're talking about awareness, that content that generates mass amounts of interest. And that's where places like TikTok and Instagram will help you because it's it's that awareness thing. It's that you have 100,000 people, you have 40,000 people, you have 20,000 people, you have 5,000 people. Those people are people who are aware. That is at the top of your funnel. Awareness is about introducing your product or brand to the world. It's about the story you create and how that story resonates with the people who matter to your brand. So Wani, I said you and I were talking about um, moving people through the funnel. It's all well and good to have a, have the people aware and have the people consider it. Um, I think Wani, you, do, you, you did exceptionally well in consideration. Awareness, you may have to consider going back to this awareness and set some awareness goals to increase the size of your community. And then we come into consideration where you get people thinking about your business and looking for more because you've sparked their interest because you've done something really, really spectacular or you're saying something that really resonates with your target group. 
And usually, if, you're say, if you are true to yourself, if a brand is authentic and true to itself and speaking and, and articulating its value system and, narrate, and, and, and giving and controlling the narrative, then your tribe will find you. You don't have to go and sell yourself short or create messages or go and create childlike TikTok content or force yourself to create trending content because your content that comes from an authentic brand place will help you to build authentic relationships. I can't stress this enough. Will help you to build authentic relationships with your tribe, no matter where they are in the world. As long as you speak your truth as a brand, but you have to know your truth, which is why I told you guys to check out the brand pyramid. And I will show you a short video from Simon Sinek for those of you who haven't seen it yet, the golden circle, to help you articulate your own truth so that you, your tribe can find you. Um, object, so consideration objectives. When we're setting object, objectives for consideration, we want objectives to get people to start thinking about your business and looking for it. We measure it in traffic, the you know, app installs if you have an app, engagement and engagement is reactions, likes, comments, um, shares, those types of things. Video views, how many people view the video. Lead generation, how many people, how many people came to your, your DMs? How many people are asking? How many people are, are leads? And for those of us who don't know what a lead is, it's a sales term that is used to describe somebody who is ready to buy or somebody who is likely to buy or messages. And I told you, messages to your inbox are a strong indicator of somebody wanting to buy. So you cannot ignore them. You cannot take long to buy them, to, 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 to respond to them. That is the space where you facilitate conversion. Dale is asking, are we going to be able to access these slides after? Yes, Dale, I will share these slides with Fashion TT, who will disseminate to you guys. Um, uh, right, at this stage, people, people may not necessarily make a purchase. This is at the consideration stage. You see, we're at the middle of the funnel now, right where this girl's bikini bottom is. At this stage, people may not necessarily make a purchase, but they start the process of making that purchase. At the consideration level, you may want people to register or download something related to your product or service, complete a purchase, or buy something they weren't planning to purchase. Um, Kimberly, it's not fashion, but Freetown is a brand that created a large following before they became a household name. They have a true authentic following. That Freetown is such a perfect example. And I do quite a lot of work in the music industry as well. And I always say that my favorite, brand, my favorite band on this planet is Freetown. My favorite song on this planet is Good Swimmer. And that's because they have done really, really, really great work at representing themselves authentically and, and controlling their own narrative and reaching out to their tribe, which is really what great branding is about. And if you guys want me to do a fashion branding workshop, let me know, maybe we could get Fashion TT and Netflix to sponsor another one. I'll be happy to do a workshop to help you really build a very powerful brand so that your message resonates well on, on social media. So, and then finally, in the effect in the at the bottom of the and i'll be happy to do it yeah. at the bottom of the the, the the funnel is your conversion conversion are objectives conversions are objectives that encourage people interested in your business so this is people who are interested right they're already interested they're on your page they like your page they've dm'd you they, they they know that they're interested all you need to do now is take their money um <laughs> encourage people to um objectives that encourage people interested in your business to purchase or use your product or service and it's measured in conversions um and conversions usually are when they click through to your website or a sale or a visit to your online store now with facebook shop it will literally be measured in an order on facebook at this final stage you want people who are aware of their brand to have considered your product or your service sorry who are aware of your brand and have considered your products or service in the past to make a purchase either offline or online you also want to nurture new customers and get them to purchase again in the future so this is a great opportunity for you to keep our conversation going if someone has purchased from you it's a great time to take their email address because you know they like you 
and then you begin a conversation with them on email and you keep them subscribed and you keep them engaged so that they come back so now you move them through the funnel again through through, through um through through your your content so those are the effects driven objectives so as we begin to plan our our content and as we begin to create our social media strategy the first thing we need to do is identify where we want to go in very specific terms how many i, I and it goes as simple as this one you let's say you're launching uh, uh, and guys if if you all just speak up and tell me about your brands i'll use more of your brands as examples but you know um i can speak to to wani and i could speak to oh god is is it it's not kiran it's not kiran it's it's i'm scrolling up it's kabir <laughs> it's not i could speak to wani and i could speak to kabir because i i have a, a sense of of that and i could speak to to um what's my partner name um Karen, K clothing line. So those of you who speak, we could, you know, I could kind of give you specific feedback. But so for now, let me let me go to Karen K. Karen K, if, if you are launching a, a new line of of hoodies, like a, a completely new design altogether, um, you would want to at the beginning of your marketing process, after you've finished your actual collection, at the beginning of your marketing process, you say, all right, well, here what I have a hundred pieces that I want to move. And so therefore, I need to, to convert 100 people. In order to convert 100 people, I really need to get at least 1,000 people aware. You know that rule of, of 1%, 10%? I want to get 1,000 a, a people aware. Not, not aware, to consider it. And in order to get 1,000 people to consider it, I need to get 10,000 people aware. So I need to run a campaign that involves involves stimulating 10,000 people. So now you have a road, now you have a plan, now you have an objective. I need to stimulate 10,000 people and move those 10,000 people through to a funnel to sell my 100 hoods. That's how it works. And then to do that, you come up with different tactics. So I'm gonna go back. You come up with different tactics at the awareness level. Yeah, I'd like to, at the awareness level, you think to yourself, all right, how do I get 10,000 people aware? So I can, one, boost an Instagram post for $100. Two, create a, a competition that asks the 100 people who are following me right now to tag 10 friends in order for a chance to win one of those hoodies. Three, um, call loop tt and ask them if they write a story about me four ask an influencer to wear my hoodie and those are so many options i remember i said a while ago it's easier to come up with 10 ideas than it is to come up with one so you're coming up with 10 ideas at the awareness level how do i get oh, 10 000 people to be aware of what i'm saying and i just gave you four ideas and then once those ideas work and they do because integrated marketing communications works now my electricity just dipped so if for any reason um my internet drops just log back in i will just log back into the call if anything if you all see me disappear hopefully i'm still here you're still hearing me right give me a little yes right okay good um Right, so you come up with all of your different ideas for awareness. And when, at, when you're at the end of it, if you realize, you know what, only 5,000 people were aware, then that means that your awareness tactics didn't work. It, it means that, and that's it, you know, it's really just about performance management, learning from your performance and going again and doing it again. That's what business is. We're gonna keep, and that's what data-driven business is. It's about setting your, your, your objectives, gathering your data, monitoring the performance, and then iterating and keep getting better, optimizing as you would, and keep getting better. And then at the consideration level, so you, have, you now have your 10,000 people aware. The whole country, electricity dip, right? You now have your 10,000 people aware. 
you want to now make sure from those 10,000 people, you move them down to consideration. So now is where you start to open your heart. Now is where you start to talk about what's really meaningful to you. You start to give real insights into your brand, your mission, the spirit of what you're doing. My favorite brand on this planet is a brand called Oatly, O-A-T-L-Y. It's a brand of oat milk. Anybody ever heard of it? You know why Oatly? So oat, it's a brand of oat milk that um, is really targeted towards vegans and people who are considering to be vegans or people who are on the fence about veganism. Because the basis of Oatly, the b basic brand story of Oatly is that too many cows are dying and living horrible lives for us to enjoy cereal. The agricultural industry and the, agricult and the industrial revolution and the agricultural revolution has put cows of all the creatures on this planet, has put cows in a place where they have, and forgive me fashion TT, literally the shittiest end of the stick. They have, they are the only, well not the only ones, but they're the most enslaved creatures on this planet. They spend their entire lives in captivity, generation upon generation. They're raped, their children are taken away from them, and their, all of their nutrients are sucked from them. And what Oatly is doing, they call it deprogramming the milk industry. What they're doing is trying to get people to recognize that we don't need to do so much damage to cows for us to enjoy our macaroni pie or enjoy our cereal or enjoy it because we don't need it. There are so many substitutes. There is rice milk, there is almond milk. There are so many substitutes that are plant-based that don't hurt animals in such a horrible, um, long-lasting generational man. And that entire brand story is written on the side of their box. And that's why I love them, because they put their brand story first. And when you become aware of Oatly and you start to consider Oatly, it's almost impossible for you to not fall in love with them if you share that belief system. Petrina is saying right now in the pandemic, milk is being dumped because sales are low and have been dipping since before the pandemic. That the entire milk industry, in my opinion, needs to be deprogrammed, which is why I switched to Oatly. Now, I don't drink Oatly exclusively because it's the most expensive brand of milk in the, in, the gas, in the grocery. Sometimes I drink almond milk, but I certainly have been made aware of the detriment of the, the industry by Oatly. Um, ethical dairy farms are cool. So, so there are alternatives, but the point is we need to think. And that's what Oatly connected with its, its tribe for, or its family of people who have like-minded beliefs. And this is where it's done at the consideration level. After someone has been made aware of your brand, this is where you talk about your story. This is where you create content, that longer form video content, where you sit and you have interviews with the, the designer, or you sit and you show fashion shows that talk about this, the, the use of sustainable material in your fashions, or the upcycled material you're using in fashion, or the reason you came into fashion is because your mother was a fashion designer, or your father owned a chain of fashion designs, and it's a, a legacy in your family. And you know, things that matter and will matter and will resonate in the hearts and minds of your consumer base. Another brand I like very much is Just Water by Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith launched his brand of Just Water in Sweden, and it's really just water. It's just, a, it's just bottled water, but it's not served in a bottle. You buy it in a box that's made out of plant-based material. And he's saying that we really just want water. We don't want to pollute the environment with all this plastic. We just want water. And so people who believe in that belief system, who don't want to pollute the environment, will, get, will buy in to, the, to that. And this, in the consideration space, is where people get to understand that every time I buy a box of just water, I am contributing to the movement against pollution. 
just water this tastes better because of that box <laughs> yeah and, and you know it's also very expensive and and you see one of the two things one thing that oatly and just water has have in common is how expensive it is why can they afford to be that expensive because they have a compelling brand story and they positioned it effectively on social media and on digital media so you want to and this is this is the type of talk we will get into in the brand workshop that we do sometime in the future um we it's really about telling your story here and events like what wani did the other day here here is here is the consideration this is what's happening so let's say wani you had um you had set an objective of having fifty thousand people aware then your your workshop that your webinar would have had more than 20 it might have had 500 and that's really just how this thing works so this is where you tell all of all of your stories and then in conversion here is not so much about content tactics it's a lot more about facilitating the conversion so are you going to maybe create an order online form if someone wants to order um, whenever they want to order do you want to create a google form also free a google form and paste the link here so that people can if they want to order something they link it and it, it sends you an email or do you want to put a phone number here or do you want to set up a customer service system within your direct messaging where you provide a, a, a situation where you are always responding to customers when they come to you but the point is at this stage customers want to buy and your job is to facilitate it's now 12.28, so we are half an hour into our lunch. So I'm going to stop here, and we will come back at 1.30. So I'll give you guys a full hour lunch. And when we come back, I will not continue until I hear from at least two of you on how this workshop has begun to impact your business. Because the reason we're doing this workshop is to make impacts and make inroads so that the fashion industry can move forward entirely and so that the businesses in the fashion industry can actually get value. So I want to hear from you guys that this is making an impact somehow. And I want to hear that I'm going to implement this that we discussed this morning in this way. That's the type of feedback I'm hoping to hear. And I want to hear that from at least two people before we move into the rest of content. So. If you, if you feel brave enough to speak, decide what you're going to say and come back and let's talk about it. I will not move forward until we get two people. Good. So we're going to stop here. Um, and I'll see you guys at 1.30 sharp.